You can't talk about art history without seeing the impact Catholicism has had on art and the impact that art has had on Catholicism. It's time for our monthly art history lesson with Charles and Amanda Shepard from the Fort Wayne Museum of Art. This is Kyle Hyman. I'm here at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art with Amanda Shepard, but instead of Charles, we mm-hmm. have a special guest. Yes, we have Ellie Tullis with us today. She is a painter of considerable talent, and her exhibition, Theotokos, Contemporary Visions of Mary, just opened up November 30th. So we're really excited to give that to the community. And how long will that be on exhibit that will be on view through march 8th so you have a long time to see it but don't let time go by so ellie when did you start deciding that you were gonna be painting lots of images of mary uh i didn't put much thought into it Uh as far as a series with the first one i just started the first one january 1st actually and then i just kept going with it and um started talking with the museum and ended up getting a show and putting together a series for it. So what had you painted before this? I had done a lot of portraiture in the past, but um, I had focused on animals recently. I did a body of work of big cats like tigers and okay. lions. <laughs> so it seems a little departure from that to get into religious art. Did you see that yes. as religious art whenever you yes, did I the did. first one? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what inspired that? After my daughter was born, I wasn't getting very good sleep Uh and about six weeks into it she wasn't sleeping good and I just wanted to paint so bad and somehow I had saved an image of Mary on my phone in the middle of the night I'm not sure what prompted me to do it but I was praying a lot of Hail Marys in the middle of the night for Uh some sleep those first few weeks and a moment of frustration I said to my husband please hold the baby I have to paint and I started painting this image and I thought he's looking over my shoulder going, what is she doing? Uh She's painting Mary. Why is she painting a religious painting? And he didn't say anything, of course, (laughs) but, um, he knew better. He knew better. (laughs) That's right. And I don't know. I just, it made me feel better. I felt peace and calm when I was working on it. And then I, after I finished it, I wanted to start another one. So I just kept going. So which one was the first one? Um, it's called Full of Grace. Okay. That one is uh, after Sasa Verado. And I didn't know who it was by at first. I kept doing some research and I thought, well, this is kind of weird to copy somebody else's painting in a way. And I wasn't doing an actual copy, but that seemed kind of strange. And then I found out that the artist who painted that painting actually uh, modeled his after a painting by Raphael. So it okay. made me think, okay, this is all right. I'll do it. Keep going. So, Amanda, is this common in art that there'd be like derivations of works? Oh, absolutely. Okay. You know, artists throughout the centuries have tried to claim that a certain genre is dead or a certain medium is dead. In in the 1950s, Jackson Pollock, you know, claimed painting is dead. Right. There's no more to do. I have concluded the story of painting. <laughs> and of course, that's not true. So, you know, going back to medieval times and in the Renaissance, every era of artists will claim like, this is painting. But yet they're always looking what has been done before them. And then there are always students of the old masters. So for Ellie to be looking at the old masters is actually a really smart thing to do because she's not denying the greatness that's come before her. And she's not saying, oh, well, I'm going to reinvent this. And I've chosen the original subject of Mary. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's not original. (laughs) You know, she's been painted for centuries. So yeah, it is very common. And it's a really neat thing to do. I think it's a really humble, but smart thing to do as a painter to look at what feats of painting have been accomplished and then come to it with, I'm not necessarily going to improve on them, but I'm going to do it in my way. Mm -hmm. So how would you describe the style or, first of all, anybody, you sent me the the website Mm -hmm. to these and Mm -hmm. everybody that I've shown is just amazed. I know. They they love it and (laughs) they are dead set on coming to see the exhibit. And I I think one thing that I see is they're so different. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, this may sound weird, but I would say it's very 
painterly. And I think Ellie knows what I mean <laughs> right. when I say that. Absolutely. She's not trying to hide her brush strokes. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of the painters that she references of the Renaissance would try to hide brush strokes for, in order for it to look as natural and realistic as possible. And so try to make it look more like a photo. Sure. Yeah. Have had at the time. Right. But. Right. And, you know, expressionism really hadn't been introduced in the art world at the time that really didn't come in until we get into modernism in the 20th century, in the late 19th century. Um, but Ellie is an expressive painter, but she's a controlled painter. Um, she moves easily between expressive brushwork and then really sensitive swatches of color to contour the face, which is not an easy thing to do. In some of her paintings, we see spots of turquoise reflected on hmm. Mary's face, which we don't see spots of turquoise when we look at each other, but in a painting, it works. And I, I have looked at the one you're referencing right here is sitting in front of me, and I didn't even really notice it until you pointed right. it out. But when you look at it as a whole, it's very pleasing. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, and, and there are um, really nuanced colors in our skin. You mm -hmm. know, we look at our skin and we see a single color. But if you really would look at each other for a long time, you'd see blues, you'd see purples, you'd see peaches. You would see colors that you just don't expect. And it's a painter's job to kind of heighten those and bring it to our attention. Hmm. So, Ellie, you find an image that you like, and then what it goes through your head? What? Because there are different styles too. It's not just different images, but some of them are a little more abstract, maybe, than right. others. I'm not sure. Each one was different, like you're saying. But with a couple of them, like these specifically, I had saved um, images of vintage fabrics as well. Uh -huh. And I put those with the piece and thought sometimes I would start just by painting the fabric first and then go from there and put the image of Mary over it and then okay. kind of, you know, like almost like a collage come together yeah. or something, mm -hmm. but all done with painting work them together and then let one inspire the other, which way, which direction the painting would go from there. And then some things are almost blurred out mm -hmm. from the image. So yeah. what was the decision there? I guess just typically controlling the viewer where you want to take them. You uh -huh. know, look past this, come up here. This is the important part. Some people might be surprised, like in this one case of blurring out what was Jesus mm -hmm. to focus on Mary. Mm -hmm. Did that have to do with you being a new mother? I, I, second time over, this is your first child, but that. Um, did that alter your kind of view of Mary and, and focusing on her a little bit more? Possibly. I'm looking for that escapism a little bit in um, the time to paint by myself, uh -huh. you know, a little bit of a break in the piece. And then just focusing, keeping all the pieces about her and then everything around her and the environment kind of going back behind her. Yeah. Kyle, I'd like to add to that. Um, over the course of developing this exhibition, uh, you know, I tried to guide Ellie in whatever way I could, you know, she not needing much of my guidance, but also I think it's helpful that an artist can have some outside direction, much like a spiritual director, okay. um, maybe an objective person who sees something you don't see. And one of the things that Ellie said to me is, I just don't understand what Mary looked like. Mm -hmm. You know, she's depicted as a porcelain figure, uh -huh. perfect, mm -hmm. um, no expression, no wrinkles, but she was a mother, she was a wife, she must have been tired, uh -huh. she must have been happy, she must have been sad. Sure. Uh, maybe she was frustrated over family life at times. Um, and yet in art, we just see the serene, beautiful virgin, which that's how we like to think of Mary. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the image that rises to the top of our minds. But she was a human, mm -hmm. fully human, um, sinless as she was. And so I directed Ellie to a podcast 
on Mary, okay. a Word on Fire podcast. Uh-huh. And, and she's like, oh my gosh, like I so needed this. And it was about the theology of Mary. And I don't know if that helped you any, but I remember there was a key moment when Ellie said, I'm drawn to Mary, but I want to know who she was as a person. Mm. And so throughout history, Mary has been surrounded by angels, by the Holy Family, by saints, by petitioners, by holy souls in purgatory. And um, I think Ellie is trying to get at the person of Mary Hmm. and not just the image or the icon of Mary. Yeah. Yes, I would agree with that completely. Thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) It's interesting, though. I don't feel like any of these images to me look like how I picture Mary. None of them. I thought, oh, that's what she looks like. What about looking at all of them together, do you think that gives you a more complete picture or is it still missing something? Um, It does give a more complete picture, but it was sort of one of those things that kind of the more you learn about Mary, the more mysterious she is. So, How did things evolve between just doing this as a whim for the first one to at some point, I'm not sure at what point this became, this is going to be an exhibit. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm making pieces for an exhibit versus just for Um, some kind of internal desire. I'm not sure that I made that distinction in my head. I just kept going Uh and thinking, well, when I have enough, I have enough and I I'm still working on them right now. Other pieces outside of the show. So (laughs) when people come to the show, hopefully they do come to the show. Mm -hmm. Anybody listening right now, what would you encourage them to think about or to look for in the paintings? Like what, especially for somebody that isn't used to going to an art museum. It's like, this sounds interesting. I want to check it out. What would be some advice that you would have for them? Uh, I guess just reflecting on who they think Mary is as a person also, and possibly identifying something about her that I don't know that I put in there, hopefully a Hmm. personal, I mean, just to have the time to reflect in front of each piece. Uh about. So, how has making these paintings had an impact on your faith or maybe how has your faith had an impact on your painting? Um, I'd say I was about 20 paintings in when I started questioning where this fit in personally. I went to Catholic school as a non-Catholic, never attended church or anything after that. And, um, had sort of always kept God at a, a distance, you know, that's close enough, you know, And as I was learning about Mary, I read that her main goal is to bring people closer to her son. Mm -hmm. And I thought, whoa, not not me. You know, maybe I'll just stop at Mary. Yeah. (laughs) And I that clearly turned out to be not an option. But I was inspired and I just kept reading and learning and started praying a lot. And um, I'm now joining the Catholic Church. So, wow. Mm-hmm. So 20 paintings in before. Yeah, that I started to, questioning it and I started to feel um, really lost working on them, wondering, mm-hmm. oh, this feels inauthentic. You know, why am I doing this? Is it just for others? And um, sure, that's fine. But you can't just say for no reason, I'm just going to paint an image of Mary. I had to have <laughs> a reason. And then 20 paintings. I think <laughs> I really have to start reflecting on this a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah. So ultimately led me to not fear Jesus and to, to want to get closer, I guess no more. Mm -hmm. Well, these are amazing. People need to see them uh, at least on the website, if not in person. So where can people go to find more information about it? Uh, They can go to fwmoa.org. Ellie Tullis also has a website. Just Google Ellie Tullis. Mm -hmm. Uh, The the paintings in her exhibition will be for sale. It would be really nice for people to consider that if they really love the paintings. All right, great. Mm -hmm. Mm fwmoa.org. And And ellietullisart.com. Mm ellietullisart.com. All right, great. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.